Welcome back to the Journey Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If you've been watching, you know every episode is really just talking to a guest. Hopefully something here, any type of way can push you forward. Uh, but I got a special guest on for this one, man. Like, uh, it's been a minute, been knowing this dude for almost a decade now. Definitely going to give him his flowers to begin it. Um, but high school phenom, Hoop State, former uh, five-star recruit, number one PG in the country, lottery pick, and now he, a real NBA vet. Facts. Year six, <laughs> Fayetteville's finest, Dennis Smith Jr. What's up, bro? What's up, my boy? You all right? I'm good. And it's, it's past a decade. Yeah, just We knew each other since we was 12. Since we was 12, bro. Yeah. We both 25. Yep, 30 years. Always, he always say, I'm a little bro. We only like a month apart. When's your birthday? November 25th. Oh, no, I'm only, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. He say because I'm short. Yeah, you, uh, little, yeah. you little, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, bro, uh, glad to be here, bro. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Rested. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, on the back end of the season, just trying to finish strong and stay healthy. Yeah. Mm. Bro, it's been, um, this summer I feel like was big for you. You right. back at the crib now. Uh, playing for the Hornets, you've been having a good year, bro. I know it's been a roller coaster uh, the past couple of years, but how's it feel to kind of get in your groove? Um, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Uh, a lot of people was trying to tell me who I am and things of that nature. Just like you said, last season, last summer was major for me because uh, I'm working against all that. I my last year ended with an injury. I didn't get to finish the season. Yeah. Um, so I had got waived and. I can't. I went into the summer. I didn't even really have nothing in nothing lined Bro, up. Bro, I mean, you read. I mean, obviously, I don't know how much you read them. I know I feel like you always try to be tunnel vision, but at the same mm-hmm. time, I know you're hearing it. Yeah. A lot of people was counting you out, like right. for real, right. like. And to me, you definitely. Bro, you created your own path this summer. Like, you kind of willed it into existence. Facts, facts. I ain't have no plan. I ain't have nothing lined up. I was just working, 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 and shit. Whatever was going on today, that's all I was taking care of. Yeah. And, you know. I just let everything fall into place and it landed me right here. How did that feel like, cause I don't know if you've been in a position like that in a minute where you like, cause bro, you've been the man for a while. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To where like, I ain't say you ever, cause when I met you, you always had a chip on your shoulder. We'll get into that. Face. First time I met you, I was like, bro, this dude playing hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bro, we are, I didn't know who he was. Y'all had yeah. no black uniforms. Yeah. And he was busting our ass. I was like, bro, <laughs> I don't know who this dude is, but he's, he, he, he hard. But it's going back to that, it's like, I feel like you ain't had your back against the wall and that predicament in a while, like to where, all right, you really gotta go make some of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like what was going through, like how'd you, each day, each and every day, how'd you get the mental? Um, Some days it was kind of tough just because, I mean, if you want to be truthful, some days it was kind of tough because of pride. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like, damn, they saying this about me. Like I can't do this, I can't do this, but right. they giving this to X, Y, and Z, you know. That's that's always the wrong thing to do, you know, right. the wrong way to look at it. And once and like you said, when I played on that team from Fayetteville with the black jersey, like I, I came from humble beginnings. So I when I, I actually operate in humility. Yeah. So I never had to realize like that stuff don't matter. I'm just gonna keep working and working and if it's meant for me, it'll come. And if it's not, then you know, I'm just gonna keep doing my job and living my life. It is what it is. Bro, it's it's interesting to say because I feel like I look back at my life, but even people that's watching, you all you you hit spots where like sometimes you don't really know if it's meant for you, but I feel like the worst thing is to quit in that moment. Facts. Cause you know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, you don't really, you pray, or we, we pray, we be like, God, like show me, show me a path that's for me. And I feel like almost sometimes he really does give you a choice. And like the path kind of cl- uh, like the path appears along the way mm-hmm. more so than it's like, it's a clear cut path. All right, you, this is, I work out this summer, I'm gonna be on this team. It's like, you definitely could have quit bro. It's other dudes in your situation that like definitely folded in those moments. Right. And for to make it out to that point, like, um, was there a moment there you kind of like, obviously you was pushing through for a second when you, you kind of saw the light in the tunnel? <clears throat> um, I can't really say it is. I can't really say it is. I, bro, I was just working. Yeah. Like just relentlessly working. Like I'm, I'm coming up to Charlotte to work out in the summer, just get runs with the team. And yeah. so it'd be a situation where I work out uh, twice the day before and they like, Yo, we want you to come up. So I'll fly there the next day. I'm talking about if I had a ankle sprain or back injury, right. I'm like I'm just I'm coming out. out here to get it done. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that kind of made it easier for me that I was just so focused on work and I had people around me who was like, All right, bro, come on, let's get up at seven AM. Let's get in the cold tub. Right. And I had partners that was down to do that with me. So that made the journey a little easier too. For sure. Um but then it happened, bro. So I guess walk me through the steps of like I, cause I saw the videos. Um Shout see- out Maul. 
Shout, yeah, he, shout out, bro. He hard. He did all that. And I, you know, I don't care for social media. I know, I know, bro. I know. You always feel like that. <laughs> I'm off social media right now. Y'all can catch me on Facebook. But I'm, bro, I'm bro, off you all of that on, right you now. You've been relentlessly on Facebook since he was a kid. I don't be on, <laughs> I be on Facebook to keep up people from the crib. But bro be on Facebook like like we be on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I never made a TikTok. Instagram, I'm, I'm not on that right now. But, uh, yeah, bro, Ma was just doing his thing. Like, he pumping out these videos. And I got coaches like from NBA teams, like oh, I just seen this video of you doing X, Y, and Z down there in Miami. So it really, it helped me out a lot too. Where is the power of social media though? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So where we live in to where like, you almost change your narrative yourself. Right. Like for real, like, and like, cause a lot of people, like, it's kind of outside of the mind, but then one of the videos is quality, but at the same time, like your name's the whole weight. Right. And, and you see me playing against other pro guys and then right. you get to see me like, you get to see my character. Because a lot of people, you know, they'll say, like, oh, he an asshole, boom, boom, boom. Right. Like, bro, y'all don't know me. Facts. But also, I'm to the point where I really don't care to clear it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think them videos gave people another perspective and showed them a different side of me. I think that helped me out a lot, too. What did you say, like, because the – walk me through staying solid. Like, what, what's the what's the mentality behind staying solid to you? And that's what comes with this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I say that too many times every day. Shout out to my boy Bo, but uh, that's just really what it is, bro. That's what come with this shit. Like when I was, he said that when I was going through a tough time in Dallas. Yeah. And whenever he said it, like it, it, it meant a lot to me. But that was just from his observations. I right. assume of just like him watching how things were going with me and how I was handling it. You know, I'm not just trying to sit there and complain and throw problems on people every day. Like right. I just have stuff going on and I deal with it. Whatever gonna happen, gonna happen. Yeah. That's just what come with this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, I feel you. It is, I mean, because a lot of times, bro, it's just stuff in life. Like, that's why the journey is like, everybody is on a journey, some some path. You know what I'm saying? You, you mm-hmm. somewhere, you got somewhere you're going to go, and there's going to be things in your way that are put there to test you. Right. And it's like, either in those moments, you can either stay solid or you can fall. Yeah. And they really do determine, like, the trajectory of your, of your path. Facts. And so there's like, and... And on the other side, and more so, I say more so than like what you, where you at. I feel like you're proud of who you became. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's why I wouldn't like replace nothing. Like people are like, oh, if you was in this situation, you could be all star by now. Da 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 da. But like, I got life outside of basketball. Right. And the things that I learned, and that I'm able to like pass to other people. You know what I'm saying? And now that I got my son. Like the things I'll be able to teach him and show him is stuff like that. Priceless, and that don't come with just making a, a all-star team or right. whatever, like anything basketball related is, I went through a lot of trials and tribulations in life. You know what I'm saying? Basketball was a part of it, but right. I learned so much and I wouldn't trade that for nothing. For sure. What's been, uh, what's been your favorite part of the season so far? Being in North Carolina. Yeah, being in the crib. Being in North Carolina. When I, uh, when I got to start early in the year yeah, <clears throat> and I was coming out for a home game and they was like, uh, uh six, two guard. And his roots run deep in North Carolina. That's hard. You know what I'm saying they like from Fayetteville. Then they like I was like, damn, that's tough. Right yeah, that's you can't tough. even like, and that's the thing, bro. I feel like with God, like, it ain't what you would choose, but you wouldn't change it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because I, I know, bro. When you, when obviously you get drafted, and we'll get into that later. But I mean, like, you probably couldn't have chosen this path. But like, I feel like when stuff like that happened, bro, you can't even, you can't even make it any better. Like, you can't even script it any better. It's like, bro, you're the crib, yep. hooping. And you've been a long time, like you had this dream to get into the NBA. Now you're playing in front of your family, mm-hmm. everybody here. Um, definitely special. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you before we like kind of we're gonna take memory lane for a second, mm-hmm. bro. You dunked on, bro. How is right. it? You, you had this ain't the first. I've seen you dunk on a lot of people. Yeah, but <laughs> what be going through your mind, bro? I, I really was just going. To, I'm like, all right, he closed. I see how he was closing out. I said, I'm about to try to get to my left hand. And when I was taking off, like, you think, you know, you play sports. Yeah. Like, you think of so much in that, that uh, split moment. Like, I'm like, man, my dog said next time I jump, just try somebody. Right, it be going through your mind, even though it, it's like. It's all of that, you process all that real fast. So, like, my dog, like, just try to dunk on somebody. Like, he said, if I don't make it, then I'm going to get a foul. So, right. I jump up, and I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> so, whenever I rise up and I dunk it, it's like, I never, like, I didn't even really. I ain't even feel like I just done it to somebody because I was just trying it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So then when I seen it, I was just turned up. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I got my tech and they took some money out my pocket, but it was worth it. Yeah. It, that, was, that, worth it. it was definitely worth it. it was, yeah. That was, that was a hell, hell of a play. Um, and, bro, what are your, you, anybody watching for a long time, any basketball fans, but that Hezzy. 
Facts. Look, look. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you let me get to that lift. I'm telling you, brother. Hezzy has been deadly for years. All right, going down memory lane, bro. First time I met you was mm-hmm. uh, we were, um, damn, I think it was, it wasn't Concord. Uh, yep. It was Concord. Mm-hmm. Concord, I don't remember. It was like the Concord Complex. And Carolina Courts or some shit like Carolina that. Courts, Carolina Courts. Carolina yeah. Courts. And we, we I ain't going to say we wasn't a humble route. We was playing Coach Gray's, CB Spiders. We, right. had, a, we had a Nike Unis on. Fresh as hell. Y'all fresh, fresh as hell. <laughs> the Kobe's. Yeah. Everybody had custom LeBron's. And we was playing. A, it, was, it was supposed to be a two-dump tournament because we about to go to, uh, I don't know if he's going to D.C. We was about to go play in a big tournament. Mm-hmm. But he was like, it was like our first time, all of us getting together. Um, and coach was like, we're going to play a couple of teams. Let me see how y'all play. Right. And so we play. Uh, and then I see like the Fayetteville. Seminoles. Fayetteville Seminoles. Yeah. And I'm like. Shout out Coach Harrington, RIP. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I think either you weren't that tall. I think Quay was the tallest person on the team at the time. We got Bam. Bam, six four at the time. Mm-hmm. We had a couple couple dudes. It was like, all right, we got a legit team. Yeah. And we, I ain't going to say we didn't expect it much, but I ain't really. I didn't know what to expect. So we're going to the game, bro. And next thing I know, I think we down. And then I, I think he's one of twelve. Yep. Yeah, one of twelve. And number twelve is killing. Right. I'm like, bro, killing. And Coach Gray's mad as hell because he's like, how y'all losing to this team? And I want to say we lost the game. <laughs> I, I think y'all came back and won. Did we come back end, and win? But we was giving y'all hell, bro. Man. It was you and Gray. <laughs> I was like, they had to have twenty apiece. Yeah. And. That was back in they used to put me in box once. So I'm trying to guard him at, I'm trying to guard him at Quay and I'm getting killed. Yeah. And then coach was like, as a smart GM, he was like, hey, we, y'all wanna play for us? Facts. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> and that was a link up right I there. I know, that was the link up. And then uh CB Spires was a good run. And then it became the Carolina Diamonds. As more people would know the Carolina Diamonds. And bro, we're looking back, uh and obviously everybody got their own pass. We talk about mm-hmm. just a- athletes on that team, bro. Mm-hmm. Obviously your path, mm-hmm. uh, Bam. Yeah. Seventh, yeah. Quay Parker, mm-hmm. uh, DeAndre Overton at the time, uh, Ty Graves, myself, Jalen Seegers, uh, Brendan had a had a good little career. Uh, I'm trying to think, Kalia Sykes. Yeah. You got ten guys that went and play like some type of Division One sport, Facts. which was like a special. And we was all from across. Y'all was all from North Carolina. Me and Seth came from South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm gonna tell you my time when I knew how basketball went for me, guys. Look, it was because uh, <laughs> look. I was the one. I'm like, I, I, I thought I was nice. I was good. Like, we was coming up. That's what you used to always watch, Derrick Rose. Bro, I said, we were like, all right, you be D Rose, and then I'll be Russ. Like, I, <laughs> I was, I was wanted to be D Rose because at that time, I went short, short, but then I stopped growing. Everybody, he started hitting his growth spurt. Mm-hmm. Everybody said, I'm still 5'8, five, 5'9. Five, and I was watching Derrick Rose religiously. Facts. Him and Nate, Nate Robinson. He was watching, uh, he was watching Russ. He was also watching um, Ryan Harrow. That, yeah, he was like that. He was like that. He was like that. It was him. That was, uh, used to watch John Wall. We was all mm-hmm. watching everybody. But the time I knew, because I was like, man, everybody nice. And I was like, I was just getting not as nice as everybody. And then it was one game, bro. I forgot. We was playing like somebody. We was in a raggedy old gym. And coach was like, we was blowing somebody. He was like, everybody get a dunk. <laughs> <laughs> so, bro, we like eighth grade now. Look, we eighth grade. 14 of there. We like, uh, he said, everybody get a dunk. So then, bam, get a dunk. Seven, get a dunk. He throwing off the glass. That was your first dunk. First in the dunk. Game. In a game, yeah. In a game. Yeah. Off the glass, one hand. Yep. <laughs> and after that weekend, bro, I was like, man, look, this might not be for me, guys. Let's go try football. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out. It worked out. It what, worked what out. What do you remember most from that time? Right decision. That was in, uh, that was, I think we was getting ready for states. That was in Raleigh, whatever yeah. that was. But I'm, I remember all that, man. Like the times were special. Even sure. when them boys was getting that recognition and stuff, I was I was happy for them boys. Like it was me getting it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you know they they took off before I did. Like real quick. I mean, yeah. obviously seventh. I mean, to this day, I think I saw somebody talking about YouTube videos, but I'm putting seventh that first ninth grade who mixtape up there with anybody's bro. Good. When that when that dropped. I remember being in class just watching it. I'm telling people, like, nah, this is my partner, right? Like, this right, my boy. I play with yeah, bro. Yeah, like, I know, bro. Like, this this really my dog. So, that when that dropped, it was crazy. Like, and shoot, he been this in, like, a, a AAU sensation since he was, like, 11 years old. That's what I'm saying. So he yeah, was dunking at, like, 11 years old. Facts. And so, um, yeah, I think a lot of them guys caught on sooner than you did. Mm-hmm. And it's obviously, 
Like you, you did, when you caught on, you caught on. Right. But even talking about that, I think a lot of people, uh, there'd be a lot of high school coaches or whatever watch this. It's like, even going through that process, what was your mindset? I mean, I was just happy for them boys, man. I was, I was super happy for them, but yeah. I knew whenever, like, <clears throat> whenever I play somebody, I know I'm gonna try to bust their ass. But man, I was happy for them, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then whenever we got to play each other in high school, like I was looking forward to no, it. No, I know. I was looking forward to that. And it was a, a crazy matchup. That went viral on YouTube. And shit, it was my brother. We yeah. still link up after that. Nah, for sure. What about be, being like a late bloomer? Because there's a lot of people, I mean, you got some guys. That's why, I, like, the, the, to me, the words of journey kind of describe the path for everybody. Because you got some people that catch on quick. Mm -hmm. And I ain't saying nobody, name nobody names, but just people's journey. Some people catch on quick and it fades. Facts. Some people catch on late and they had a little moment, but that fades. It's right. like, Everybody kind of like as you stay stay the course. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you don't quit, you are gonna have your moment. Right. So how was it kind of waiting for that time? Uh, I I really think like the key for me and just my life and also work for my career is that I always been the same person. You know, and Facts. that's a credit to my family Facts. how I was raised. Like whether my career going here or is at the bottom, I know I'm gonna be right here the whole time. I'm gonna just be right there. So. I was I went from unranked and we went out to a tournament when I joined Adidas. Uh, me and my pops got on a team load. I went from unranked to number one point guard in the country as soon as I hit the circuit. Bro, it was like it was just like that, bro. And that but that was tenth grade, so I mean you could still count it as a late bloomer, right? Because people was doing Team USA and all that since middle school. I know. So as soon as I hit the circuit, I was like, oh, he's number one point guard in the country. You know what I'm saying? And that didn't change me. Like I still stayed the same person and stayed at the same school and stayed the same. Uh, like the way I carried myself throughout the whole time. No, nah, for sure. I, mean, I remember it happening because I was like, like, man, bro just jumped everybody. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot. Of, and bro, I think y'all's class, or I mean, it, obviously I started playing football, but I think that 2016 class, it's a lot of longevity. Obviously, everybody had different careers, but you mean, you look at that class, uh, like Houston in the league, De'Aaron Fox in the league, Tatum, Monk, Monk, uh, Bam, Bam, Donovan Mitchell 2016. A year before. He yeah. was a year before. Um, I'm trying to think who else from that class. Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball. Uh, I mean, some guys had a run. Thon Maker, Harry yeah. Giles. Yeah. Josh Jackson had his run. Yeah. So, I, it's a lot of us. I know. It was a deep class. Like, it's one of, to me, like, like the epitome of, like, the the who mixtape. Like, a lot of, there's a lot of hype around y'all's class that came mm -hmm. out. Um, I want to touch on something before we kind of get moving down the journey. How serious was you going to play the NFL? I was dead ass serious. Me I was dead ass serious. I was dead ass serious. <laughs> the funny part, bro, he's coming out. He's always be like, bro, if I swear if I wanted to play football, bro, I'll be Deion Sanders. I'm telling you, bro, I really was like that. Like, like not just saying I'm the best in the world, but bro, I'm six two, six three. You know what I'm saying I'm I'm two oh five. I hit two fifteen before, you know, and that was without even trying to put it on. So. Right. I'll be looking at like other safeties. I look at their size yeah. and things like that. Like, I'm just saying, Darwin James, 6'2, 215 yeah. on Madden. I right. could get that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so uh, I mean, then I would still have to get um get some of the instincts back because you know, it kind of lose you like just timing and all that. Right. You know, you you lose some of that. But I started working out, start doing seven on seven. I was getting a lot of one on ones in and I was getting bigger too. When I came up here, they was like, damn, I didn't know you was that big. I was like, bro, if only you knew what I was getting big for, like. Right, you <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You I won't plan on, yeah, I won't plan it on like just keep hooping because I was like, like, it was like not, I wouldn't say it was quitting, but like the shit was like, all right, bro, they really just like, they really just don't want you to be in this, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I started looking like, well, I'm young, I'm still athletic, and I yeah. still, you know, I like to compete. And I think I could pursue this. So I was gonna try my hand at it. Bro, I think it'll be interesting to see. Tell me this, you think it's easier for somebody, for a football player to play basketball or no. a basketball player to play football? Basketball to play football. And you know that, bro. I know. I just want to hear it like somebody else say. I just, I'm going to stick up because I think it's some football players that can't hoop. But it's just a different skill set. Yeah. Because you can get away with athleticism in football. You can't really get away. I ain't going to say you can't get away with it. It's tougher, bro. It Look, is. If, if, you, if, you got some, if you bring somebody in like, all right, they just an athlete. Like, they can't think the game at all. That's tough. Right. But you put somebody in that's uh, like – a lot of people that be like a smaller point guard, let's say a point guard that's like 5'10", 5'11". Right. Let's say he just locked people up. You know what I'm saying? He's super fat, but like, man, dude too small. If they want to say that. Yeah. Man, if you go put him at corner or something like that. Or running back. Put, running back. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, put him on the field, let him use that speed and agility. Like, okay, then he can have impact. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? But these basketball dudes, you got people like, so many boys be like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and they like, they big guys over there. Bro, you come over here and you 6'4", six, you 6'5", six, you really ain't that big. Yeah, you an average. Yeah, like, you, there's two guards that's that size. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just come over and think you're going to be deboing everybody and getting off. Right. That ain't happening. No, I agree. Um, <laughs> I saw that this summer. I was like, bro, I would love to see it. It may, who knows? But you, even because, I mean, you'll be, are you a six year? I'm six years in the league, 25, bro. It's crazy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm well, old, bro. Bro, we are getting old. Take me through, um, I think one of the most exciting parts is obviously you staying at home to mm-hmm. who when you went to NC State. Yep. Which I thought was like, I was like, bro, bro, could have went anywhere. Did you take all your visits? Nah. I took a visit there, though. Yeah. I took one visit there and I ain't taking anymore. I took a lot of unofficials. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you just, I'm going to stay at the crib. Yeah. What was your mindset? Because, I mean, it's everybody. Yeah, everybody. I mean, a lot of people in your position. You kind of say you create that way. I'm trying to think who who did it before you that was kind of like marquee. But, like, I mean, a lot of, you see that more often now. But you obviously could have went to the biggest schools, Kentucky, Duke, mm-hmm. uh, probably UNC if you wanted to hoop. Yeah. But then you started to say at home and kind of create your own lane. What was your thought process? Well, <clears throat> it's just, I, I kind of been like this since I've been in, in kindergarten bro where I just and I I really think it's just a credit to my friends that I grew up with where yeah. I never felt like I needed approval from other people mm. you know what I'm saying like I was just comfortable being myself and the decisions I make like so even in high school I had a couple places trying to get me uh hunting and prep right in West Virginia they was major national schedule yeah. and they had uh Carlisle prep I think with Thine Maker I remember yeah, yeah then they had Mount Verde in Florida yeah they was all trying to get me to go there but I just stayed home yeah. I just stay home and put on for my city. Like, I still do that now. I'm still home all the time now. So, right. <clears throat> I think that's important. And I go to NC State. My grandma was always an NC State fan. Mm. So, uh, you know, she could pass that on to me. She tried to pass that red skin shit to me. <laughs> I don't want to go on for that. <laughs> but uh, the commanders now, the I don't want to go on for that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it was just like, you know, just showing her love, too. Right. Know? And then it worked out, bro. I mean, obviously, like, I mean, was there ever a doubt that you weren't going to get to where you wanted to go by going there? Nah, I I was so confident. I was so confident in me being able to make it to the league after my junior year. I was trying to get uh, I wanted to get Bam because you know me and Bam finished AU together again. So I was trying to get Bam, Harry, and Seven. I wanted to go to HBCU. Like this was before people Be- was talking about before it. Before it was like trendy. Yeah, this was before it was a wave. You know what I'm saying? I was trying. I was like, man, let's go to A and T. You Swear. know what I'm saying? I promise you. I like let's go A&T. but nah. then look at the schools they all they then they go to UNC, Duke, and Kentucky. Right, the three biggest you could possibly go nah, to. No, no, <laughs> you know the what I'm saying? Is that opposite? But you know, I just I be thinking stuff like that. Like I, I be believing in myself, bro. No, for sure. Yeah. Before we move on to uh the, to more, some more college stuff, tell me who was the hardest person you faced on the circuit? <laughs> on the circuit, probably Trey Jefferson. He was hard. That motherfucker cold. Trey Jefferson was like that. Yeah, he was. He was like that, and he supreme confidence. Yeah, he can shoot at every every play if he want to, and it's gonna be a good shot. Right, <laughs> it's gonna be a good shot. He's tough to stay in front of him, man. He a dog. Like yeah. me and him was roommates. We got close at top one hundred count. Me and him was roommates, so we, you know, he cool. He tight dude. Uh, you know, tight dude like I grew up with. Yeah, you know? no, so for we sure. We get along well. But Tyler Ulis was the best player I played in high school. I always say that he was like that. He was tough, bro. He was like that. He was, <laughs> he was no, like he really that. was. He was smooth. He was at CP3 camp busting ass. I had never seen somebody that little just giving out work like that. He was cold and he locked up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any, any other memorable moment as far as like, what was your breakout moment <clears throat> you say on the circuit? You feel, probably, like you, had, you feel like you had one? Um, On the circuit, probably that first weekend when we went to Dallas, like when then I had got ranked. We went five and zero. Oh. Yeah. And that time we didn't have Bam. We had like me, Demetrius Choi, Jalen Forns, Isaiah Maurice, Sean Kirk, Aaron Bennett. Uh, we had we had some guys that weren't like they weren't really like a bunch of high major guys, right? Like a loaded team. Yeah. And we went out there and was busting ass. We came out five zero. Oh. We played against a lot of high major guys. Right. So I I would say that was my breakout moment. Right after that, I got ranked. Yeah. And then the rest, of, the rest was history. I'm trying. Yeah, obviously a lot of other moments in there. How was it tearing your ACL from you to school? Mm, now that welcome to the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how it go. You know how Two it go. Two of them, bro. Opposite yeah. knees. Yeah, it ain't. Yeah, it ain't fun. Especially when you're at the peak of like. What all you tore on yours? 
I saw my left ACL. It was like a clean. It was like I think it was partial. I tore ACL. It was just ACL. Mm -hmm. So I had to get that one done. My right one I tore everything: PCL, MCL, ACL, yep. meniscus. Yeah, that's how my. One. I mean, I ain't tear my PCL, but ACL, meniscus, and MCL. I tore all that. And this was I had a TV game the next day, and they was like, I don't even want to give the people names, but they're like, you got to play against this dude first, and then whoever wins gonna play in the TV game. So I'm like. Why y'all trying to hide this up? Like, I'm about to kill, bro. You right. Know? So I come out, I'm rolling. Like, I got, like, I had, like, six, six points and five assists in, like, the first three minutes or something. Like, I'm getting yeah. off. And then I go down, boom, I make a move, and I plant off two feet. And as soon as I plant, I, it was two hands on my back, and my knee went in, and it popped. Yeah. And I just went down. Like, that shit was – I never tore nothing. I never broke nothing in my life. So, uh yeah, that was tough. That was a tough little moment for me. What was you, uh, I guess, because you missed, how many games to your senior season? I missed my whole senior year. Madonna's game, Baller's Life game, all that, <sighs> everything. Yeah. Still did one year in college, though. I know. In and out. Bounce back. But missing all that, <laughs> how'd you feel in those moments? I mean, obviously seeing the, seeing the, kind of the whole world kind of, especially, that's kind of like the peak of, especially basketball. I mean, you kind of work to get mm -hmm. to those games and like you want to have like those moments on tv like everybody else yeah uh <clears throat> i i had i started watching it like the games and all that just but i started getting mad <laughs> <laughs> i started getting mad and i cut the games off and then i just never thought about it again bro yeah it's like it is what it is life goes on that's what come with this shit, bro that's what come with it ups and downs bro it is what it is um i'm trying to think going back to college mm -hmm. see obviously make it through that and then to me, obviously, you got more memorable moments. It's your story. Mm -hmm. But the moment I remember the most was, this is my freshman year. We had just won Natty. And y'all had, I remember y'all came to Clemson, we watched, we watched that game. But then mm -hmm. you, uh, when y'all played Duke. Yep. That was, to me, that was the moment where everybody was like, like they knew. Mm -hmm. But then it was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah like, it's oh, nah, he got it. How was that feeling? It's crazy. I mean, I was just so. I was so lost in the game, bro, that I don't even really, I don't even really remember being in the game. Like when I think about it, now, I don't really remember being in the yeah. game, other than when I watched the highlights. But I was gonna go to Duke. That was your second choice. That was my. It was like it was NC State and Duke. Like my final four was NC State, Duke, UNC, Kentucky, and Favor State. Just showing love. Yeah, you just know showing what I'm love. Yeah. So I was gonna go to Duke. Me, Jason, and Harry was always talking about it, and then they had started recruiting Frank. Jackson, that's my mm. dog. They start recruiting him, and they was like, "You the only point guard recruiting." So then when they started doing that, I'm like, "I don't like how y'all just did that." Yeah. <laughs> so we only played them one time that year, and I was like, "Nah, we got to make this a statement game." Mm -hmm. And we locked in. I don't remember being in the game at all. I just remember getting back on the bus and people was uh, crowd surfing on hills, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like that's all. They was crowd surfing on hills, bro. I just went back to my room and got on the phone with my, all my homeboys and I was talking mess, but. That it was a, that was my breakup moment. That shit was crazy, bro. That dunk. I mean, uh, it was like the perfect storm, the exclamation point. Then uh, that team was loaded, bro. I mean, that that yep. Duke team. Matt Jones, Grayson Allen, Emil Jefferson, Jason Tatum, Harry Giles, Luke Kennard, uh, Marquez Bolden, bro. A bunch they of pros. Stacked. They was stacked. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of pros. I think you, everybody just named untouched. The, and the I don't game. know nobody from your team. Not not Stony Shave. I'm saying as far as like, yeah. like I guess guys that have kind of went on and yeah, <clears> like I mean, bro, you was. It wasn't a one man show, but you had a you had a night, and I was like, "Damn, bro, it's like stupid." <laughs> yeah, that shit was crazy, and it's crazy now because I go back and watch it. Like, it's like these some tough buckets, but it ain't really too much. Like, um, like I just I look at the game so different. Like, right, I, I just view the game so different. Like these some tough buckets, but how much of this was really within the offense? Like that's how I be thinking about shit now. Yeah, you know, my perspective changed, but I still enjoy the moment. Though. Turn I like to coach, it. bro. <laughs> That's what I be thinking. Everybody keep telling me I need a coach, but I, I ain't gonna do that though. We'll see, bro. You still, you still got, you still got a little while. Um, obviously, one of done at NC State, mm -hmm. and then decided to go pro. And one of the things I want to touch on for like, because you, you've already hit it on it, but I think one of the things I admire, and I feel like it's, it may be in a fair in water, bro. Because I feel like a, a lot of people who come from come from come from like that area, like y'all always show love to where you're from, right? Um, and I think people that have as much success as you have. That ain't really always the case. Mm -hmm. I think some people do it when it's too late. Right. And you, I feel like every moment in your life, bro, you like the city's always been, like you always made a point to show love to the city. Right. Where does that come from? Um, so much family I got there, and then 
yeah, I got friends that became family there. And they all got pride in it. Like, and I, I always had pride in it too. But we really just love each other. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's just genuine. Like, once I start getting a bunch of shoes from like EYBL and all right. that stuff and Adidas, like, people come to my crib, like, first day of school, bro, let me get some shoes. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's not, it's a no brainer. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just, we just love each other like that. And I think, I don't know. Me and my boy talked about it, bro. When you born at Cape Fear Valley, it's just something about it. Like you just yeah. you just love it, and you really represent your people. And you know they they expect you to put on for them too, right? You know, and that it, that expectation don't feel like a burden. It feel like, man, I'm thankful I got the opportunity to be the one. Right, for mm -hmm. sure. I would say like in every situation, where, like when you have a moment when people blow up, I think um, I'm gonna say it's a sad part. But whenever you come up out of any city or any county, is like if you don't do it. I ain't gonna say pe people are obviously gonna talk, but I feel like people, like they're not verbally gonna say, oh, he didn't put on. But then whenever you do do it, you can just see so much love. Like, bro, it's mm -hmm. like, and I, I wish, I mean, more people would do it um, just because it's like every kid, because <clears throat> I feel like when you do it, do you ever see your younger self? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like wanting somebody, cause who, who came out of Fayetteville before you, like hoop, hoop wise? Oh, uh, we had Eric Maynard, um, CJ Williams. Yeah. But the difference with those guys and me, like, so the reason that, my love and favor is a little different than other people's is because I was always really outside in Fayetteville. Like yeah. I stayed in Terra Gardens. Right. Terra Gardens, Tiffany Pines are two most known hoods in Fayetteville. Right. I stayed in Terra Gardens. Um, I used to be in Tiffany Pines. Like my first, uh, you remember a girl I was dating in middle school. <laughs> like, so she used to live in Tiffany Pines, yeah. you know, so I used to be in Tiffany Pines and then Rose Hill Gardens, I used to be there and I was at Seabrook all the time. And I used to, yeah, that was that was your spot. Yeah, we was at Seabrook all the time, and before then I was at College Lakes. So that's just like any dude that you seen that they said was nice back in the day. Like it's some people that was super nice in right. sports, football, or basketball. Like a lot of times they was at College Lakes and they was at Seabrook. Right. And I went that same path. It's just that I'm the one that God chose. Like I'm a I'm gonna keep your path clear to where you can make it all right. the way. You know what I'm saying? Even thinking about that, bro, because you, I feel like anybody look like us. It's you either gonna be in it or know somebody that's in it. How'd you? How'd you stay clear? You know what I'm saying? Cause it's, it's bro, it's easy. I ain't gonna say it's easy, but like I think you are super talented, but bro, you, you go back to where I'm from, where you're from, there's a lot of super talented dudes that didn't make it Thanks. or didn't fulfill their potential to the point where they like, they're doing something that people will be proud of them for, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And ain't no judgment, but but what advice or would you give to somebody that's kind of come with those environments? They got they got a chance, bro, Yeah, to it's, make it. It's my dad, like the that, the, the, the father-son relationship in a black household is critical. Yeah. Um, Cause a lot of my, my like a lot of my homeboys that I seen straight, like they were like, bruh, when I, I grew up in Terra Gardens, everybody was playing football, you know what I'm saying? Or everybody playing basketball on the monkey balls, boys and girls. Right. We all playing tackle, we all tough, and we all got dreams of going to the league. Right. I'm raised with my dad, so <clears throat> the times whenever we out there playing in the hood, and then it's like, now it's 6 p.m. Now, you know, the street light's gonna come on soon. Right. What you finna do now? He come out, let's go to practice. Now I'm going to the gym. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or now I'm going to the baseball practice or the football practice. So he was just so hands on and involved in my life that uh, you know, there's no way that I could have went opposite. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I always tell people like my pops is my dad. Like he was never like my friend. Right. And I'm thankful for that now. You yeah. know, like back growing up, sometimes you look like, man, this dude be so cool with his pops, he just be cussing with his pops yeah. and doing whatever and like, hey, that look cool, bro. Why we why we can't do that? But as you get older, you start to understand things, and you know all the time that my pops put in with me, like that means so much to me, and I'm, I'm forever thankful for that. And there's nothing I can do to repay him. Yeah. You know that that's time that he took out of his day to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Like when I start playing baseball, we went to Dicks. First, I remember he was like, "All right, you gotta get this glove." You know, he just telling me about all the sports because right. he was he was nice back in his day. Yeah. So he just telling me about all the sports. I don't get to talk about my dad like this that much, so yeah. that's why I'm happy about it. But. So he like, we go to the, um, when I first start playing, we go to like, uh, I can't even remember what store it was, like a regular grocery store. And we got, we getting a baseball glove. Right. And he give it to me, he like, try that on. I'm trying to put it on my right hand. He said, go on the other hand. I'm like, I'm right handed, bro. How I'm gonna <laughs> put it on? Like, he said, you gotta throw with your right hand. You just catch with this one. So he teach me that. So then we go home, we working on catching, we working on fielding and just pop flies and things like that. He's showing me how to throw and and when I got older, we went to Dick's and he bought me a hit away and he'll tie it on the park and I just work on my swing. Right. Whenever I start playing football again in high school, 
because I stopped the seventh eighth grade. When I got back and they wanted me at wide out, I came home with a route tree. He came outside with me and we worked on the routes, you know what I'm saying? And I was just running him and he throwing the ball, he taking his time out with me. Right. Just being hands on. So that's the key for me. Like I feel like if my pops on around, it would have been easy to strain doing all that other stuff because I got friends that I'm close with that was doing, you know, Same. that was into all that. I know. And just what from where I'm from. So that that path could have been for me, but my dad, he saved me. So I'm thankful for him. Bro, what you said, I think how they say it is uh like kids spell love T I T I M E. Facts. You know I never heard that, but that's real. Yeah, that's how kids spell love. They don't they don't think about nothing else. It's like the time you invest in them. Yeah. Um and I look back my pop my pop same way, cause I think the thing that's I fuck with the pups too. Yeah, you nah, pop school. You know, you know, I know, you know yeah. I rock with them. That's my pops dog. All, yeah. We still coming on each other Facebook posts all the time. Bro, okay. did, <laughs> look, that's what I'm saying, bro. I remember on Facebook. He'd be like, uh, talk to Joe. I was like, I ain't talk to man. He's like, yeah, we coming on Facebook. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, but my dad's the same way, bro. I just think that like, like you said, I think that especially in a black household, but but any any household really, but your father, and even if he. As you, as you grow up, you start to see, like, everybody ain't perfect. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. um, and so as you get older, sometimes that can, like, you can have all the journey with that. But I think for me, it's, like, just him being present as I got older it meant the world to me. I ain't know at the time. I knew I was, like, I love my dad and stuff like that. But then, like you said, you start to see other people. And sometimes, like, I be wishing other people had what I had. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, I don't think it's, I, I know people that had worse, like, worse situations that made it out, too. Right. So what would you say to somebody? Because... Somebody don't have that dad. It ain't no. It's still ain't. I ain't gonna say I do understand somebody that goes through those things, but it still ain't no excuse. So sometimes you gotta use your situation. It's somebody who won your situation. Right. It's a, it's a lot of people that made it single mamas, but right. I think now that we getting older, you know, you had your youngin. Yeah. I had mine, but even still, aside from them, we gotta be like the kind of male figures for that the community. Help people. You know, that's why I'm always home, bro. Right. Like when to be I do an example. My, yeah. When I do my basketball camp. I don't make no money from that. Right. I do a basketball tournament. I don't make no money from that. Right. It's really just me putting money out. You know, like yeah. I don't charge nobody at the door. Right. Whoever want to come in, come in. I let uh, whoever venue I'm having, I let them get the concessions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not about making the money for me. Like when you ask me if I see the kids, I remember Ann One came to the school one time. <clears throat> And that's not NBA, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I know, but, but growing <laughs> up, and one Was the shit. What, hot sauce? Yeah. So I'm like, damn, and one here, like, I want to talk to him, like, boom, boom. I, and now I get to be that guy where I can mm. just, kids can see me, they can right. shake my hand, right. you know, they can talk to me, and I'm one, I'm a guy that made it, you know, right. and I'm from wherever y'all from, you know, right. like, y'all ain't gonna tell me y'all from anything worse than what I'm from. Yeah. I'm saying I was in Terra Gardens and I was on the Merc all the time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, bro, just like when people can see you and they can touch you, it really give them something to believe in other than just saying, oh, yeah, I'm from here. Like, you know what I'm saying? What's up? And keep my distance. I'm always home, bro, riding around regular. Bro, I, and, and nobody in particular, but I think about guys who people say they go Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or they make it and people are so proud of them, they wish they could touch them. Right. It's, it's, some, it's some people, even when I was growing up, that came out from, from I was like, I never saw him. I knew they was they was from the crib, mm -hmm. but it would have meant the world to me to like to see him, or right. even just see a picture or see him back in the city. Right. And so, what like, I guess what message you know to anybody that's kind of making it coming up, even the people that made it. Like, what would you say to them? I think the more success you get, the more humble you got to become. You know what I'm saying? I think I just that's how I operate, and uh, you know, keep the people around you that believe in you when you ain't had nothing. Keep them people close. Yeah. You know, because they'll keep you humble. Um. And that's just my family for me. That's my family. Like, I come around, you know, we might, you know, we would talk shit. Like, oh, yeah. you just dunked on XYZ or you just did this, boy, you killed. Like, you can do that because that's it's okay. You know what I'm saying? But they'll keep me humble and be like, man, this is this is me at my core. Like, this is right. who I am. These are my morals. This is what I was uh, brought up on. And I can never forget where I came from. So, yeah, keep them people close. I think it's twofold, too, because I think – Keep the people around you that the, like that came from the beginning because, like you said, I think they keep you humble. Mm -hmm. But then the same times in my life, it's like when I have had success, like people have kept me down to earth. When the whole world is like, "Bro, you the man, you do it, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever," or some some cool happened. But at the same time, I think it's important to keep people around too because, but when you go through it, 
Yeah. It's like they the ones that see you for who you really are. Right. Cause you I mean, bro, as a man or anybody as you as you if you driven, you on a mission, there's gonna be times where like you're gonna forget who you are. Mm-hmm. Not entirely, but you're gonna have moments, you're gonna doubt yourself, you're gonna like look internally and feel like you ain't the person you wanna be. Yep. And those people be the ones but like, you but you did it Smith. Right. You right. Darren Rencher, bro. How, like Facts. you know what I'm saying? Get it together. Facts. That's true. You need them people, just like man, that's, that's right. Like the opposite side of it. Like whenever you're going through things, they ain't gonna try to look at you no bad like you got people who would be like oh you a bad basketball player or you a bad football player right so you a bad person right like your family will never think that never. you know what i mean and i'm super thankful for my whole family too that's my support system yeah so i appreciate them and i always keep them close facts um let's get to the league so you get to the league mm-hmm. and you can you take these questions however you want to take them mm-hmm. um first year in dallas was hella exciting right like, just just watching yeah you know what i'm saying and just seeing like you get to that moment get to that stage mm-hmm. and it felt like it felt like everything was perfect and that's me i, I started looking in you know what i'm saying like a situation right and you was, <clears throat> you was in your bag yeah like what was your first year like in the league man it was fun like just being there because you know i just I, since i was young i just watched so much basketball i know i watch basketball all the time like i still do that now so to finally be in the league and people can watch me or I can, I'm playing against the people I grew up watching. You're I on like, 2K now. Yeah, I'm on 2K. Yeah. Like, now I'm here. Like, I got back-to-backs. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm flying to play X, Y, Z. Yeah. So I was like, damn, this is amazing. This is all, what I always dreamed of. What was the biggest transition? Playing back-to-backs. <laughs> <laughs> playing back-to-backs. Like, I remember we played. Everybody be like, what was your welcome to the league moment? Like, was it when you played? Bro, when you played? I was like, no. When I had my first back-to-back, we played in Dallas and then left that night and flew to Orlando and then played Orlando the next day. When I got up that morning, I was like, damn, I'm in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was so – I was tired and I was like, we got a game today. Yeah. So that, that was my welcome to the league moment. Who was uh, – who was your – what kind of getting – I think you – which is ironic, bro, because people you still got you still got you still got like your offensive bad, but you become a defensive specialist to people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who is – Who's the toughest guard that you that you face? Man, I can't even sit here and say nobody hard to guard no more. Not from an arrogant standpoint, but it's like, bro, I was just in Portland last year. And I guard Dame Lillard every single day. <laughs> like, yeah, no, he's been for 71. Yeah, you know what I'm 71, saying? 73. 71. Yeah, 71, 71. So I'm guarding Dame. I'm guarding Ant Simons. So before y'all knew how good Anthony Simons was, I already knew. Like, right. He went in my, He became one of my favorite players in the league last year. Yeah. And I'm guarding C.J. McCollum or I'm guarding Norman Powell. And I'm doing this every day. Right. So it's like, now it's like, man, I study the game. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. But, I mean, I had to guard KD a little bit yesterday. Yeah. And Devin Booker a little bit. So that, it's, it's, it's a lot of tough guys in the league. For sure. You know, but I – I like the challenge. Yeah. So I ain't gonna really sit here and say somebody. So yeah, you gonna say, you get, yeah, you ain't get nobody. I, I love the challenge, bro. Like you, you gotta come on with it. Cause I, I know I am. So yeah. you know I'm ready to get to it. Um, what was it? What was it like? Let's speak to two questions. Um, mm-hmm. when Luca first got to Dallas, it seemed like, like it seemed like you know what I'm saying, salt and pepper. Yeah, facts. Yeah, facts. like how how was the beginning? Man, that shit was fun, bro. Like, as soon as he touched down, I'm like, bro, when you get in, just tap in. I'll, if I'm not at the crib, I'll be at the gym. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So we'll figure it out. So we ended up linking up <clears throat> at the arena. You know what I'm saying? We chopped up for a little bit. He ended up staying in the same uh, apartment complex as me. Yeah. And the girl I was doing with at the time became cool with his girl. So we was just hella close, bro. Like, like, we got some stories, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> where we be riding around, you know, and, and that was my dog, bro. He like, seemed cool. Man, he cool as hell. He cool yeah. as hell. Like, that shit was smooth, bro. We went, we went paintballing and all that. Yeah. It was it was fun, bro. It was fun. I had him um, and I had Doe, Finney Smith. I remember, yeah. So I was just, I was hella comfortable being in Dallas, bro. Yeah. Hella comfortable. And his coaching staff was Daryl Armstrong, Jamal Mosley, and yeah. Shawn God was, like, family to me. Yeah, and they was like family to my family members when they came in town. Right. Mm-hmm. What was it like when like things went a different direction? Well, that was never a the the problem with that was it was never a me and Luca problem. Right. You know, like even we though that's how it was portrayed, like, right. like you couldn't play off the ball. Or... Right. And I like 
you don't like him, he don't like you. And it was like, bro, we, I'm getting on Fortnite because of bro. Right. I don't fuck with Fortnite, you know what I'm saying? But he want to play, so let's do it. Like, So it was things like that. <clears throat> and we, 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 I don't think, we never let that put a wedge between them, mm-hmm. you know, which I was always thankful for. Like, even that summer when I got traded, I'm due to be back home, and it'll be like 2 a.m. over here, 3 a.m. over here. And he'll just call me randomly, bro. Yeah. Like if he popping out somewhere, if he going to the like the club or something, right. to turn up, he'll call me like, "Get your ass up!" Da, da, da. <laughs> like you soft, like like just you know. Yeah. So it was never a problem with me and him. You right. know what I mean? So uh, yeah, when everything started going sour, that was the that was the the part that was really messing with me. Like people trying to come at my character saying, "Right, oh yeah, he jealous of bro." Like like you said, you was on the team with me when I want the man, and I, I was never hating on nobody. The end. So never. That shit never changed for me. Yeah. I was going to the Knicks. That was fun. My first year being there. In, being in New York is like a vibe, bro. Especially yeah. where you can move how you want to move. Yeah, my first year that they was letting me hoop. So I was going stupid. I came out, I had a career high, like my third game. Like yeah. we was going crazy. Um man, that shit was fun my first year. Yeah. Second year was a little different. Uh, I'm trying to remember it was a second. Oh yeah, that's when they just signed a whole bunch of guys. Yeah. And we was doing all kind of shit. And um uh, I was that in the league because I mean, yeah. Uh, um, as far as like, with anything, bro. I don't say it's politics, but there's, there's, there's. No, it is politics. That's what I'm saying. You absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> you absolutely right. How, but how is that? Because there's probably been times in your life. I ain't say you didn't earn it, but it's things that worked in your favor. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And then there's obviously times in your life when things have not worked in your favor. How how do you deal with the politics? That's what come with this shit. <laughs> That's really how I look at it. People may think I'm morbid, but like how I view things. But, uh, you know, that's just really, that's how life made me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how life made me. Like, that's just what come with this shit. I don't, a lot of things that I can't control, I don't take them personal. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's life. It is what it is. Ain't nothing I could do about it. So I try not to stress over it. Yeah. And for the most part, I really don't. Right. Yeah. For sure. Um, all right. Little Lee, we're going we're gonna to finish with some, some questions for you, bro. So I think one of the, one of the cooler moments, and it's happened before people even knew, was obviously your relationship with Cole. Mm-hmm. So Cole, J. Cole's from Fayetteville. Yep. You from Fayetteville. Yep. What was the first moment like? Tell me the first link up. <clears throat> so the first time we linked, so I actually go back. So I want to say 10th grade, 11th grade, something, 10th grade. And I used to wear the Dreamville shirt in the warm-up lines. You know yeah, saying? like the black and white one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I used to wear my Dreamville shirt and warm-up line. And um, I had another one. I had a great – I got – I ended up getting another one, and it was gray. So I, I would be switching them, like, during the games. You right. know what I'm saying? And my dog, Big Maul, I, I was just on the phone with him earlier today because he had, he just came home. So I'm talking to him at the uh, arena. He was like, oh, you love Cole, bro. You stay wearing the Dreamville. And I was like, man, he don't show me no love anyway. I ain't wearing it no more. <laughs> Tell him when I see him, I'm gonna put my hands on him. You know right, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, some shit yeah, like yeah. that. Like, so uh, he was like, man, it was like a couple months later, he's like, hey, calling him in town, little bro, I'm about to come scoop you. So I'm like, all right, say less. So I'm like, uh, I'm like, Pops, I'm finna go to the um, skating rink, meet uh, Cole and them. I'm gonna go to the, house, the little house joint and meet Cole. Yeah. He was like, all right, bro, be home soon, whatever. So Ma scooped me. I'm saying that we go pull up on Cole and he won't at the crib, so we gotta go to the skating rink. So I'm talking to Brad at the skating rink and he knew who I was. You know what I'm saying? I guess from hearing around other people yeah. what he's seen on YouTube. And so we was having a red conversation and I'm kinda like starstruck because he's my favorite rapper. Facts. And he from the city. So like he one of my favorite people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That I like you just had admiration from from afar. You know right. So I'm uh I'm talking to him, and then Ma was like, nah, tell him how you want to throw hands with him. <laughs> I'm looking like motherfucking Right, God, don't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look at him, and I look at Cole. Cole was like, nah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we started joking for a little bit, and he like, all right, after I finish this right here, we're going to go to Kiwanis and hoop. It was like right of the road. Yeah. So we go up and hoop, and we at Honeycut. And I end up getting home at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And my pops was like, boy, where the hell you been at? I was like, bro, I was just hooping with J. Cole. He's like, I don't give a damn who you hooping right. with. I told you be home, so you should be home. And then I like, I got you. But then I end up 
getting a really good relationship right. with bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my pops built a great relationship with him too. How good of a hooper would you say he is? He nice now. He nice. Like he actually got game. So <clears throat> he started coming to NC State often. And uh whenever I enrolled there, we would, you know, we'd be hooping. Yeah. And bro would stay in the gym until he went a game, like win a game one on one. So I got a picture on my phone. We was in there till three twenty three in the morning, bro. At NC State, like just hooping. Me and bro, we had yeah. there till three twenty three. And like whichever one of my homeboys came to the gym with me. So at that time he was just cool. I went to an adult league game, he had like forty. Oh wow. But it was like forty off like I got some confidence, like I'm trying some shit, like Yeah. But now he got actual game to where he like he actually understand like the flow of the game and playing with other good players. Right. You know, that's an adjustment too. Getting used to playing with other good guys. So yeah, he got some game for sure. Bro, when he put you in a song, how mm. it feel? That shit was crazy. That was hard. Cause they sent it to me and I'm just listening to the song, like, all right, twenty one part, cool. Oh, Cole got a song with 21. Like, he doing the features now. Like, all right, So they didn't even dope. tell you. They sent you the song. Yeah, he just sent it to me. He sent it to me. It's not going through a hard time in Dallas. Yeah. Like, at the time when they were trying to pit me and bro against each other right. and all that. And I was probably going to be leaving. So, um, I'm in the car with a couple of my homeboys. They dropping me off uh, at the plane. And we listening. And he starts saying, uh, uh, Dennis yeah. Smith Jr. So, then we were there. I was like, Oh, everybody started. I'm in my little bins. Everybody like rocking, like, oh, now nah, run it back, run it back. So we start playing it back. And like, so I got to play, I showed him my boy Doe. And uh, that was major, bro. That's like a like an accomplishment. You For know what sure. I'm saying? That's an account. Like, if I put like list of great things that happened like to me, top like, 10. like, yeah, like uh, getting drafted, getting put in the J. Cole song, like that shit would be in there. Right. You know what I mean? For me. Yeah, now you're a two time J. Cole in a song. He put you on Amari. Uh, yep. Yep, that's my dog, bro. Yeah, that's my dog. Like he really, I was going through some some um, some tough times when I was with the Knicks, and he was right there for me, like you right. know. And he, he, like say, he had a relationship with my pops and all that too. <clears throat> so, nah, bro, uh, he the realest. He the realest. Him and E, man, they they two of uh, two guys that I can say are like big brothers to me for real, for real. So I'm thankful for them. What's the biggest lesson you learned from Cole? <sighs> Biggest lesson I learned from Cole. Uh, I want to say it's a lesson, but the the biggest thing that I get from bro is how he always operated humility too. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I don't even have to question if he really is like Fayetteville or not. You know what I'm saying? Like he just operated humility. When I be with bro, it's been times like when he came to my summer league games. He was coming to my summer league games in Vegas. And that's that was just major for me too. So he's sitting courtside, and you know, when I make a move, like he turned up and all that. I'm like, like that's my dog right there. Right. But then later that night, when he doing the Forest Hills tour, and I go to the show, and I'm looking like he is a mega star, bro. Bro, he, I mean, he as big as it gets. Mega star, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, bro, mega star. So he don't he don't operate like that. You right. know what I mean? He just live his life regular, like. You know, he, he know who he is. You know, mm -hmm. he know he got this kind of impact, but he don't let that affect how he treat people. You know what I'm saying? I've always been appreciative of that. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's dope. Yeah, he definitely top five for me for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we ain't gotten to everything, bro. Um, kind of round, round the conversation. It's been, a, it's been a good combo, bro. Yeah, hell yeah. No, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. I'm all the way down the route. I know. Shit. Yeah, we be, it's been good, bro. Um, last couple of things. Kind of moving to the to to current. Um, how do you? Bro, how have you done it, bro? Like, if we're being honest, you know what I'm saying? Like, real, real, real question. So I think, bro, you've had a lot of eyeballs in your life. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like it's definitely guys bless you, put you in position. Yeah. One from your own city, and then to a national stage. But you've been a household name for, bro, almost a decade now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be real. Like, a lot of kids when we was coming up. He's watching John Wall, who Facts. makes tape. Bro, it's, it's millions of kids out there before that game. I'm sure they turned on Dennis Smith Jr. Right. And when they got to college, man, he wanted down to be like, bro, Facts. got to the league. You, you in a dunk contest. You're doing your thing. Um, bro, it come with it, – it's weighty. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, like, everything happens for a reason. But I know your, your, your career hasn't been exactly, like, the smoothest ride. Mm -hmm. How have you done it? <clears throat> so it's kind of like um, the people that I choose to like to listen to, bro. Like the things mm -hmm. that I choose to accept into my life, 
Um, it's all, when people ask me if it's one thing I could do or tell my younger self, it would be to read more. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like, once I started reading books, it changed my perspective. You know, I started learning so much, and, you know, I'm reading somebody else's story. And, and I, like, a lot of times it was, like, the nine, the uh, the fictional joints, like right. The Alchemist. Right. Or, like, Chop Wood, Carry Water. Right. Like, books like that, <clears throat> I started reading and started learning a lot. I learned a lot about myself, but I learned a, a lot about perspective and um, trials and tribulations while I was doing that. Mm-hmm. And that's also a shout-out to my mood, Abdul Rauf. I call him Unk, but dude was, like, he was, we was together every single day for a whole summer. And seeing how humble he is, um, I began to appreciate that as well. And a lot of the things that, you know, he's trying to tell me about, like, oh, like this book right here, like, you learned this, like, da, da, da. so this is how I look at life. I start picking up on a lot of that. And, you know, I adopted that into my life, and it just helped me out so much to where I get in a situation where I'm like, even if, like, when I was in Portland, I was on a training camp deal. So I'm like, even if it don't, if I don't make this team, like, I put my best foot forward every day. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So if I don't make the team, I'm I'm comfortable, bro. They be like, you, you cut. I'm like, that's fine with me. You know what right. I'm saying? Just because. You can live with it. I can live with that. But I, I can accredit that to the books I read. You know what I'm saying? Like, I learned that kind of, to have that kind of perspective from that. Bro, it's crazy how um, two things people talking about books, too. Because that's when I feel like I started to, like, really mature. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody was like, you want to be a leader? I was like, yeah. I was like, you better be a reader. Readers are leaders. Readers are leaders. I tell the kids that. Yeah, because it, it really is true. Like, everybody, and you would be surprised. I think people, there ain't nothing that happens in any industry by accident. There's somebody who they've had their brain expanded. Mm-hmm. And as you, like, grow older, uh, I think it's more of a choice. Like, as you see, like, bro, pe- some people are very small-minded because they don't right. make the decisions to open up their brain, whether it's people they bring around. And books are, like, you having real-life conversations with somebody. Thanks. Like, it's putting knowledge into your head to where, like, your whole perspective on life is going to change. Like the lens you see life with is now like you're going to see different things in life because you open up your mind. Mm-hmm. And the saddest part is you see like people who, bro, they don't never, uh, how they say it, uh, they get older, but they don't never grow up. Facts. That's a fact. That's a fact. It's funny, like <clears throat> even making it to the league, like I got homeboy, like I know he'd be joking and shit, but it's funny. He from the hood too. So if I, uh, if we on the plane, Cause you know I talk shit all day. Right. Like, people yeah. know what kind of background yeah, I have. Yeah, we'll come with it. Yeah. But so whenever I bring out a book, he was like, "Man, here you go on that weird yeah. shit." You know what <laughs> I mean? And that's just that's just how it's viewed where we come from. But yeah. you know, I that you know, I'm cool being myself anyway. Yeah. You know? But even that, bro, I feel like sometimes the stigma can change because like, bro, if you if you want to do something, grow something, make some money, like, like, bro, the you look, but obviously when you're an athlete. The um, the narratives can you get the benefit of doubt a lot. So you mm-hmm. can you can get away with a lot of things as an athlete. We all have. Right. But as you grow older, like because you 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 NBA player, but you're a businessman, bro. You yeah. you have a real life business. It's like bro, everybody was trying to be too cool in school. That was doing whatever, mm-hmm. failing class, yeah. not going to school, skipping class, bro. They either broke, miserable, or lame. Right. And like depressed. I mean, it's sad. I'm, I'm just being honest. It's just the truth, though. Bro, it's the truth. It's but the when truth. you're younger, I think that the you get deceived into thinking like, bro, I can do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do whatever I feel like. Bro, you better look. I'm like. But you. But see, you gotta when see when you at that age, cause that's when you you know developing habits. Yeah, you developing habits. That's why my bro, I won't allow to make C's, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like like Same. people people know me as like the class clown and yeah. always cutting up like. Like, they'll be like, oh, you was in school. You was bad. Da, da, da. But, like, bro, I made A's and B's all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? I won't allow it to make C's. You know what I'm saying? I really, I won't allow it to be getting in trouble. So, I won't get suspended or nothing like that. Like, right. my pops would have got on me for that. Yeah. You know, so that's that's my dad just making sure I was disciplined, bro. And that, that was major for me. But it go a long way. I just think that stick made the change, bro. If you're in, if you're young in high school, bro, like, being cool come with having some success more so than it's being cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. obviously, be fresh, have the clothes, do whatever. But bro, do the right thing and have some some principles about you. Like as you go, to, your emotions are gonna come from which who you are and what you know. Not getting away with stuff. A lot of people be getting away with stuff and think they gonna have motion for days, bro. You ain't gonna make no money. You ain't gonna build nothing by being too cool. Cause I think people be too cool and yeah. trick themselves out of everything. That little popularity in school don't mean nothing, bro. And then to be honest with you, like if you just be yourself, bro, like 
everything that's supposed to happen to you is gonna happen you know what right. i mean and everything that's that's gonna miss you is gonna miss you but when you're trying to switch lanes bro that's how you always wreck when you switch lanes right. you know what i mean so yeah bro just be yourself 100 percent. last couple questions for you bro um you kind of answered it but knowing all you know now mm-hmm. well we didn't let's say know you for a decade and seen really didn't seen like obviously i went there from the beginning but i've seen a lot of, a lot of your journey bro Everything you experienced, you didn't, you didn't, you've been, you didn't made millions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've made it to the pinnacle of this car- career as you started to play as a kid. Yeah. Um, you've been exposed to each anything you could you could ever want. All right. What would you say success is? Ooh, now that's a good question. It's definitely uh, it's definitely relative. Um. I can't even say, I can't even really say what success is, you know, because it's, it's it's different for so many people. Some some people might feel successful because now they're in a position where they can get women. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. some people feel successful because they made a bunch of money. Right. But like even whenever I talk to people that know me now, like it's not about the money for me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you know, it ain't bad though. Obviously, it. yeah, it's good to yeah, be. I, I appreciate it for right. sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then see, that's why I tell you from like from where I'm from, bro. If I never made another dollar in my life doing this, like I done made enough money to live for the rest of my life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, of course, I want to make as much as I can, but it's not about the money. So I don't know. I can't really say. I don't. I don't chase success though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I I I, I move in purpose. I move in like humility sure. and purpose. You know what I'm saying? And me. Being able to show my brothers, like, come on, bro, let's go to, like, Puerto Rico. Like, it sounds small because, you know, some of my dogs felons and stuff. Right. But they can't just leave the country. Yeah. So, I'm like, come on, bro, let's go to Puerto Rico or something. And they get to see that. And you got people that have shed tears. Like, even myself to shed tears, like, that I'm able to do something like that. Yeah. For my brothers who never dreamed of that. Right. I never dreamed of that. Yeah. <clears throat> I, you know, that's that's the epitome of life for me. Yeah. So, no, no, for sure, bro. I, I think... um yeah, like one of my one of my boys from college. I was I rest crazy start having conversations and different things start popping in your head. One of my homeboys from college. I'm gonna give him a shout out. Uh Josh Dyson. He he's been watching uh, everything I put out for years. Mm-hmm. Um he would always tell me, because uh, I used to when I went to school, cause I situation I ended up walking on and I was telling people, bro, I'm gonna earn a scholarship, I'm gonna leave here. Like some way, some some way my name gonna be remembered. And it was just crazy how everything, like it was hard, but everything I I did like transpire. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that is just hilarious. Everybody from Clemson would laugh, but bro, we used to get fed good at Clemson. We had right. like Coach Twenty made sure we have a, we had a chef, bro. We get fed like steaks, lobster, all this stuff. But my freshman, I was living like on campus, like a regular student, because uh, I was just I just got in as a regular student. I went on I was on the football team, but I went living in the, like the athletic dorms. Mm-hmm. But I always bring my boys some food, right? And bro, he forever was so thankful because it was like he was eating like dining hall food mm-hmm. we come back to the apartment as all my boys i got like seven steaks yeah four lobsters and he used to always say he was like man always lift as you climb right and that forever like That's real bro forever it was just such a visual because he was like bro as you continue to go he's like you're gonna have a lot more success and knowing you're gonna do a lot more bigger things same with you mm-hmm. he was like but bro make sure you lift as you climb that's real that's bro that's so real like you can ask my whole family. I think it just popped up on Facebook memories not too long ago because it was during All Star in Charlotte, and my family was out here and they was like, uh, "I had a party set up with Steph Curry because yeah. I was on arm at the time. I had right. a party set up with Steph Curry. Me and Iverson was hosting the club together, yeah. so it was a busy weekend for me. But I slid to the party for a little bit. Me, Curry, and MB. I slid to the party for a little bit, and I left. I. I ain't even really go in there, bro. Like I did, I did my little yeah, like, you through. promo stuff, but yeah. like I popped up and I was just with my family the whole time. Like yeah. granny, aunts, sisters, like we just all together over there at Fahrenheit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying having a good time when I could be partying with like the biggest players in the league. Right. <clears throat> but I'm I'm with my family and we out here eating yeah. steaks, lobsters, right. like whatever. And they like they appreciate things like that so much, but it's just trying to repay them for the time they invested with me, like whenever they took, whenever they would take us to Disney World, you know right. what I'm saying? Or whenever they let me stay at their house for the summer. Yeah. Just stuff like that. You know, you always gotta pay it for it. 
So For the, sure. the uh, lift as you climb thing, I like that. I'm going to start using that. Bro, you, you kind of answered the question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you again because I feel like you answered it. I want you to say it like, because, bro, six, I think success and – I ain't touched the M yet, but I ain't made some money. The M's coming soon. Just, mm-hmm. just, just to get to the, it's gonna be a mile market. Just to say, I, I hit an M and sooner than later, uh, but made some money. Mm-hmm. Have experienced a lot of things, and it's like, I feel like success, as I boil it down, is like the only thing you can take with you is who you become. You know, as you look at life, and I just think that like, cause it's, it's not that it's not money, it's not that it's not like. Uh, getting popularity. It's not that it's not like giving back to community. It's not that it's like, bro, man, some shoes. I remember I got some shoes I, I finally could afford, mm-hmm. and I, I like or some clothes. And I was like, that meant a lot to me because I was like, I ain't never. I couldn't like. I finally wanted to get it. and I can purchase it. Facts. Like that feels like success. It also feels like success to um somebody asks for some money. I can spot them some money. Mm-hmm. It feels like success for I be, I'm in a war show. I see my family and like I look on Facebook and they. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like right. they super proud. I, I do. I, I'm on TV. I, look, I go back to the city, and everybody resharing a post. Right. That feels right. like success. Thanks. But it's like, at the end of the day, I feel like success is who I become and who we become because it's like, it's like all those things. It yeah. ain't just one thing. It's like, it's just like I became somebody in order to experience all these things. And hopefully, as I go through life, like I forever evolve and I keep becoming. I like the last part you said, like. Your city and your your people is proud of you like that. That mean a lot because I'm thinking like who I become. Cause I could be like, all right, if I become this person in my head, then I'm successful. But like as I said, bro, like so much that come with this life shit, right. and it, it it changes. And I could be like, I expected to be right here at this time, and I'm not. But I've grown to this level, and I learned this, and I wouldn't have been able to do that if I would have got here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's relative, but. The fact that I can be somebody in my city and my uh, family proud of, that mean the utmost to me. For sure, bro. Last question. Everybody that come on the Journey Pod gets asked this question, and you can answer in your own way. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, it's the Journey Podcast. What does the journey mean to you? The journey is like uh, like chasing your personal legend. You read The Alchemist? I haven't. It's on my to-do list. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, just that whole thing. Yeah. Just the whole thing. Like, you got things that be holding you back, <clears throat> um, whether it be people, whether, like, you can say it's things holding you back, whether it's your people, your circumstance, or money, but oftentimes, bro, it's in your head. And these things, you got to be like, I got to let this go. You know what I'm saying? Or I got to let this go. And it's okay to let this go, because I know what I'm chasing. Like, I'm chasing my purpose. Like, how you say it with the M? Like, when you right. get the M... You gonna get there if you just keep chasing your purpose. Right. You know what I'm saying if you start chasing the money, then that's when the it, lines it, it, get distorted. Right. And that's when the shit get tricky. Right. So, just how that book said, bro, just keep chasing your personal legend. Like even if you gotta leave this back behind, like you had, you had X, Y, Z. Like you gotta let that go. You gotta keep pursuing this. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what the journey is. I ain't never heard that like that. Yeah, bro. bro it's been a great episode. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's why I, I got it. I really got to this because I was like. I'm gonna bring on people, use my network. Obviously, I'm got some people that I met even by going for this. But other people watch it, bro. They take something from it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there's a lot of gems in this one. Uh, but this is like my own little journey. I'm like, bro, I just wanna hopefully push people forward in some type of way. Cause I feel like anybody watching this, whether you you five years old, you can understand English, or you uh you old and you still got some life left, like hopefully something here could have pushed you forward on your way to becoming yeah. your personal legend. I like that one. Look, yeah, I'll take it out. Yeah, yeah, I ain't. Paul Coho, <laughs> if that's how you say his name correctly. Right. Shout out to him. Shout out. Uh, but thank y'all for tuning in at the end. It's never about this, but at the same time, like obviously I'm putting my heart into this. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Uh, this is going to be – it's been a, it's been my, one of my favorite ones for sure, but it's going to be a lot more to come. So y'all keep tuning in. Appreciate the support. Much love.